What's up with Rocket Joe? I have some I have some bullet points here from your website I can read, or if you just want to freestyle off the top of your head, whatever you prefer. Sure. So Rocket Joe is a liquidity bootstrapping platform. And the idea is that it's not really people think of it, of it like a launch pad, I guess. Um, they, they hear the name Rocket Joe and then they think launch and then launch pad. The difference between launch pads and Rocket Joe is that launch pads, they have a set um, token price, right? So they'll sell like a million tokens for 10 cents each. Rocket Joe is different. So a project will auction off a bunch of tokens and Rocket Joe will facilitate price discovery instead. So it depends on how much interest there is i.e. how many AVAX people deposit into the launch. And then after the whole launch is over, the final amount of AVAX is then paired with the um, number of tokens to create this LP. And that ratio is, is the final price. So the reason why we created this thing is because, um, you know, back in starting from October, like past three months, there's just been a lot of launches and what they do is they'll go through a launch pad like they've launched for example and then you know they'll do the ido and eventually after the ido is finished the project will have to see the liquidity pool on trader joe and what happens is the second that they see that lp it just gets sniped up by bots and they just buy up you know the initial liquidity and then a few minutes later you know uh, they broadcast it on twitter and retail comes in and they buy it at an inflated price. And then uh, an hour or two hours later, like the boss just dump on them to make a quick um, quick buck like that. And it's caused a lot of drama. Like um, I remember it was an issue with Platypus when they first see the liquidity. And we just felt like, you know, this is a recurring theme. Um, we should do something about it. And this whole, idea, you know, like, we make sex listings a big deal, but when no one talks about dex listings, right? Like, what is a dex listing? You just create an LP. And we felt like there could be a new way to formalize this. And to us, that was basically the whole ethos behind Rocket Joe. So yeah, that's that's really interesting because I, I'd never actually thought about it like that, but that's actually a really good point. And I think you know, one thing I just wanna kind of emphasize for the listeners, uh, we've talked about this before. We had Mark from, from Avalanche on, and we, we talked about this, and I, you know, I've written Twitter threads on this in the past, but basically it's very hard to do a FAIR token launch for, for some definition of FAIR. And there's kind of a difference. Like it's vi- like the, the IDOs, the Avalanche, they solve the problem of distributing the token at a fixed price. But that fixed price is still not necessarily the price discovery, you know, true value of those tokens. And so even if you're able to distribute the tokens from the core team or the, the Genesis smart contract, you still have to bring them into the market somehow, even if the ICO buyers are the kind of the first holders rather than the team and the smart contract itself. And so it's that process of price discovery that's still really painful that kind of like Rocket Joe aims to solve. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think price discovery. It, you know, it's it's tough. Um, like the whole point is to facilitate nat- like natural price discovery and and get participants involved in building liquidity. But it, it's also just a, a very game theoretic um, field. You're playing. Yeah, right? I, so- ideally, you want to be able to do it so that uh, the people who are most technically skilled aren't able to just quickly pump and dump on somebody and, you know, retail doesn't get screwed. And so that, you know, hopefully, you know, so hopefully everybody pays the same price per token and there's nobody who's like just cleaning up 90% of the profit and leaving everybody else holding the empty bag. Precisely. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of Rocket Joe really. And um, one of the nice things about Rocket Joe as well is that, you know, from the project's point of view, um, when you seed an LP, Usually, you also need the other side, which is usually AVAX, right? And mm-hmm. that's also a problem. Like, where do they source that AVAX from? Sometimes they have their own capital and they seed it themselves, or they have to, you know, raise it privately through VCs or angel investors. But it has to come from somewhere. And um, one of the nice things about Rocket Joe is that, you know, they don't have to 
do some kind of private deal to get the AVAX, they can do it through the public and the public will then, you know, find the true price of the token at the same time, you know, building liquidity. And I think when projects want to, uh, when they list their LP on Trader Joe, the most important thing for them is, I mean, obviously they want token price to do well, but they also want to have significant depth in liquidity. Um, that is very important, right? Like you can have fantastic token price, but you know, if you don't have um, liquidity to support it, it, it becomes a bit of a tricky endeavor. And so how has it been so far? Has it been successful? Is it live now? Yeah, you guys it had your first now. launch, right? Mm -hmm. We had our first launch uh, with Heroes NFT. Um, if I had to be honest, it wasn't as successful as people were hoping it to be. I, I do think that there are certain things that we could have managed better, but I also feel like, you know, with this first launch, I think it's a lot of it will be education. So people have, people come to Rocket Joe with certain expectations. They think, oh, this is like a launch pad. And, you know, in most launch pads, if you get in an allocation, you can make a quick 5X, 10X, or even 20X, depending on the market, right? And it's almost like guaranteed profit. Um, I feel like people who come in with the expectation of Rocket Joe and expecting like, oh, I'm going to make profit. It's not going to be that easy. Um, the difference here is that there is no set token price. And, you know, with these uh, IDOs, for example, like, it's, you know, you want to be early, but we're not really an IDO. So it's not really the same thing. I feel like it will take people time to figure out how to use Rocket Joe. And uh, it might take a few launches, but I'm sure we'll get there. It is a, I personally believe it's a very needed product for both uh, retail and projects. And um, it will take a few tries, but we'll get there for sure. How do people use it? I mean, how so basically, like, yeah, how, how would somebody launch on it basically? So if, if a project wants to launch on it, you know, they just contact us, they reach out to us. And um, right now it's permissioned. So we'll, uh, you know, we want to do the due diligence to make sure that, you know, they're a good project and they're worth launching. Do you have a roadmap and right then, now? Do you guys have people on deck? We do, yeah. So we just did our first launch with Heroes NFT. We do have another one secured. Um, we'll be announcing it in the next few days. And we do have a lot of interest from other people. So, um, you know, I, we, our aim is to have one at least once a week, probably twice a week. And then as users, how do they interact? So once the launch is live, um, how it works is that there's different phases. So I'll take the here's an entity as an example. Um, for the first 24 hours, you can deposit or withdraw AVAX and you can withdraw AVAX without any penalty fee. So you can put 10 AVAX in and then you can also withdraw the AVAX if you feel like the price is going to be too high eventually. Um, from the next 24 hours, you can still deposit the AVAX, but there is a linearly increasing withdrawal fee. And for here's an NFT, it was increasing you know, literally per second up to 20% at the end of the 24 hour mark. And then in the next 24 hours, so in the third day, you can't deposit anymore. Uh, but you can withdraw and it's a fixed withdrawal penalty of 20%. And it's basically like a last chance for people like, okay, you can't add any more AVAX, but if you think that the, uh, the final token price is too expensive, then you book, you're going to give you a chance to withdraw. And then once that phase is over, then the LP is created. And um, so there's usually a time lock involved so that you know users don't unwrap the LP and dump right away. Um, so for here's the NFT, the time lock was seven days and it will be unlocked next Monday. And in order to incentivize them for locking it for that period of time, uh, we also give them like 10% of the tokens as incentive. So the second that the LP is created, they can't claim it for another seven days, but at least they can get a share of the 10% of um, HON tokens right away. Very cool. Awesome, man. Do you, do you have any region restrictions or is it like, are US investors allowed to participate? 
yeah everyone there's there's no kyc um mm -hmm. it is completely open to everyone nice okay definitely uh frustrating <laughs> being in the united states sometimes yeah, and true. some yeah, of the other I mean, platforms like avalanche do do have kyc for and uh, exclude us us customers yeah so this is perfect for you know guys from america for example who can't can't participate in ideas I did uh, give it a thought of like, I wonder like how difficult it is to get a lawyer to set up an entity in the Cayman Islands and have them uh, buy <laughs> you know, some, some of these token sales on my behalf, but I'm not uh, wealthy and uh, sophisticated enough to do that yet. <laughs> I like that. I'm yeah. sure there's, there's uh, ways around that. this, like friends of friends or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there's definitely, yeah, it depends on how hard you're willing to try. I haven't reached the level of effort where I, I feel like oh, I'm ready to do this. I, mean, I I don't have people to do these things for me. I still have to do them myself. Yeah. And, it's uh, also effort, right? So, oh yeah. I mean, I don't even have time to manage my own personal bags these days. So, you know, I'm like, <laughs> like there's probably I, money I, to I'm be the made, but I just can't be bothered. Yeah, and it's it's really unfortunate because I feel like I actually, because I work in the ecosystem, because I, you know, talk to so many projects. I actually have do have like legitimate alpha sometimes that I <laughs> don't act on, even though it's just like, it's just too much trouble. I need, I need more set it and forget it kind of things. Cause I, yeah, this is a thing that I thought about is just, I didn't want my, you know, I used to not want my whole life to be crypto. Yeah. And then my whole life became crypto. I spent my free time writing Twitter threads about crypto. I'm doing a podcast about avalanche and it's just like, now my whole life is crypto. My fiance and I, we talk about it all the time. And now it's just like, okay, I got to take a step back because I have no. Uh, <laughs> be a positive no, benefit no, of, there might be a positive benefit of you not acting on that alpha. And that is simply that you're not mentally invested in those projects and you're able to be a bit less, mm -hmm. you know, overall invested with your stress and your focus and, um, mm -hmm. and you're just a little bit more neutral, right? Your, your um, opinion matters in that regard because you're not biased in any way. By yeah. any way. So there's, there's those benefits as well. And I will say, if the SEC is watching, I don't mean insider information. I just mean being, <laughs> uh, you know, aware on the cutting edge of what I think will be sure. successful based on past trends. So should we should we be buying a box now? Asymmetry. Is that a good time to buy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't comment on price. 